I think that uh, that's complicated. <laughs> so Buddha said, speak that which is truthful and that which is helpful. Okay, it's not just truth. The value that we, in the world, as we develop, is one has developed the purity of the mind. Now that, excuse me, as we develop the purity of mind and the happiness of the mind, the health of the mind, there's this weird thing that happens where you feel that your mental health is directly linked with the mental health of others, directly linked with serving others, if we could put it that way. Serving, we could talk about later, you know, what that means. But of being helpful, kind to people. It's a mentally healthy to be kind. And we begin to discover that. So speaking truthfully, now, what does kind mean? So speaking truthfully, you tell the person, you know, their nose is really big. I mean, if it's helpful, then you might say that, right? So the, it comes down to motivation. And this is where we have to be more careful. Because people will say, well, I'm just trying to help. Can I offer you, can I offer you constructive criticism? You know, first of all, people don't take criticism anyway. You notice? Very tough. Everyone feels defensive with criticism. Second thing is, what does it mean to be helpful? So, I think the truthfulness is, number one, what I said, truthful but helpful. Uh, number two, uh, you, we have to be honest with ourselves that usually by truth, it's a relative term. It's what we, what we mean by truth. Okay? When Buddha attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, he didn't talk for six weeks, seven weeks. Why? Because, which is the truth, in a sense, he discovered the truth. It's inexpressible. So what we're talking about is sort of conventional relative truth, which has error to it anyway. Okay. So I think come back to the motivation that you want to be helpful to somebody. Okay? And if it's just going to create disharmony and dissension, do you have no requirement to be truthful? If it's, so we have to pay attention to the intention. Are you irritated so you want to tell the truth by this person whose behavior is annoying you? Or... You know, is it something that's going to bring lasting help? The other thing about the... So it's intention and effects. Okay? It's intention and effects. Now, we don't have control over the effects. But we do pay attention to what effect we're trying to achieve. Okay? And then you check your intention. Is it really from anger? Is it really from agitation? Is it really from one of the afflicted minds? Or is it from kindness, love, affection, warmth? Okay? Concern. That's, I think, the best I can give. Uh, one other thing I can say about that, maybe. You know, our speech, the way we speak, it, it does have effects. It leaves imprints on our mind. So, generally speaking, lying and arguing and speaking harshly, those leave impact, imprints on our mind that we're going to experience the effects of those later. So, we think about that too. What imprint are you going to put on your mind? You will experience the result later. Now, Lam Yeshi with me was very rough. But his imprints and his motivation were pure. Okay, but he, he picked on me a lot. You could see it was abusive. But no, it's not abuse because it was only motivated by extreme compassion. It only had great benefit. So, but if we're not at his level. But the point being, one could do those things if your motivation is extremely pure. I mean, sometimes mothers with kids, right? They might speak harshly because it's, they, they, you know, they're motivated by care. Okay? 